Hey friends, across the last few sessions, we have spoken a lot about reflection. We have seen that mirrors are objects in which our reflection is clearly seen. Here, the word clear is stressed upon because there are other mirror-like objects that exist around us. But in spite of this, there is a world of difference between the quality of reflection found in these objects and that found in mirrors. We often look at an old photo or at our own reflection and think of how we have grown up and changed from the time we were infants to the present day. But interestingly, the same can be said about mirrors as they too have evolved over the years. Come, let's turn back the clock in time and witness this journey of mirror evolution. The first mirrors consisted of still water which people collected in vessels. These are the oldest known types of mirrors. It is amazing to observe the quality of reflection which only a bit of calm water can provide. But despite these beautiful reflections, there was one major drawback. Though the water surface was still and flat allowing for specular reflection, the system was found to have reduced reflectance of light as most of the light passed through the water. The next line of mirrors was made from a type of stone obtained from volcanic lava known as obsidian. These mirrors were found to exist as early as around 5800 BC. The stone was processed, polished and given a definite shape for better clarity and aesthetics. Though the polished surface of this metal allowed for some specular reflection, the strong black color allowed for more absorption than reflection. The next line of mirrors marked the beginning of the use of metals. Highly polished metal plates of copper, bronze and various alloys were used as reflecting surfaces. These kind of mirrors dated back to around 4000 BC. But as you can see, the drawback with these mirrors was the fact that they got tarnished, discolored and oxidized very easily. Since the first century, in a place called Sidon or modern day Lebanon, glass is said to have been used as a material for mirrors. People in this region were thought to have invented crude mirrors by coating glass with metals like gold and lead. Glass bubbles were blown and their ends were cut off, incorporating the coating leading to concave and convex mirrors to be formed. These mirrors were still primitive owing to the lack of technology and know-how on how to set glass into flat sheets. This technique of producing flat glass panes was perfected by the Venetians in the 16th century. A mixture of tin and mercury was coated onto the glass to give good reflectance. But the toxicity of mercury still posed a problem. This problem was somewhat taken care of in the year 1835 when a German chemist named Justice von Liebig first used silver as a reflective coating behind the glass pane. This mirror came to be known as the silvered glass mirror. But again, the price of silver and its ability to get tarnished upon exposure to air prompted the use of other materials like aluminum, which were cheaper and more resistant to the atmospheric stresses. In certain cases, even gold was used because of its non-reactive nature and high resistance to corrosion. Due to the extensive use of silver in the olden days, this technique of coating glass with metallic reflective surfaces is even today called silvering or aluminizing if aluminum is used. In this way, research and development in the silvering process is what led to the formation of modern day mirrors, which we are so attached to. But interestingly, as mentioned earlier, if you think that vanity and self-obsession are the only things mirrors are used for, think again. Apart from staying on the wall and telling you that you're the prettiest of all, they are also a source of entertainment and curiosity. They are used in cutting-edge space-age technology and also in cultural structures and artifacts. So, isn't it amazing how all these factors had to be looked into just so you could get a good look at yourself?